Hello and welcome to vlog 2.2, or as they say in France, de ba de. I don't think that's right. Hello and welcome back. Thank you for joining me. We've had an exciting week for theatre with some live theatre. <laughs> I know, I'll tell you all about that later. And plenty of online content that we also have to discuss. Starting with the Barricade Boys. This week they released their fifth anniversary video of Bohemian Rhapsody. Yes, that's right, it's been five years since Scott Garnham and Simon Schofield put together the Barricade Boys at the Charing Cross Theatre. I was at that first gig and it was amazing. And the boys have gone on to become global superstars. Touring around the world, they will be back with a brand new tour next year, hopefully. But in the meantime, you can catch their video of Bohemian Rhapsody on this YouTube channel. So in very exciting news, I got invited to my first press night since lockdown. It will be on August the 11th at a brand new garden theatre at the Eagle Pub in Vauxhall. They will be staging a brand new production of Fanny and Stella, the hit musical written by Glenn Chandler and Charles Miller. Glenn Chandler is a brilliant writer whose work The Good Scout I saw last year when it transferred down from Edinburgh to Above the Stag. Now Fanny and Stella is a true story based on Ernest Bolton and Frederick William Park who were two young Victorian men in 1871 who were put on trial for dressing as women. Now I didn't get to see this production at Above the Stag so I am really excited to get the chance now. Former artistic director Peter Bull is now producing this with Lamco Productions. And they have got a brilliant cast with Jed Berry and Kane Verrill leading the cast, which includes my pal Alex Lodge and the gorgeous Kurt Cansley, along with Mark Pierce and Wacky Pedro Valdez. Now, the producers have been very sensible with this one. They are only staging three performances per week on a Monday and Tuesday across August, just to see how it works out. And then hopefully, if it all goes well, they will add further dates later in the year. So it will be an outdoor production with a limited capacity of around 50 seats. So if you want to check it out, you've definitely got to book now. Now in sad news, the Crucible Theatre in Sheffield, where everybody's talking about Jamie originated, have announced that they will be closing until 2021, with the possibility that a third of their workforce might face redundancy. Now this is a sign of the time. They're not the first theatre to come forward with a statement like this since Covid, and they probably won't be the last as a lot of regional theatres are struggling at this time. And with a lot of UK theatres relying heavily on the panto season, Michael Harrison, who produces the London Palladium's panto, has said that he needs a deadline of the 1st of August to know whether they will be allowed to go ahead 
Otherwise, they will have to postpone their entire panto season. It is unfortunate, but ultimately, the safety of the cast and audiences has to come first. And until we can guarantee that, we just don't know what's going to happen. Meanwhile, in relation to this, Andrew Lloyd Webber launched this week what he called a pilot performance at the London Palladium to test out new safety measures to introduce if they are to open. This included reducing the audience capacity from nearly 3,000 down to 700 with an incredibly spaced out audience. Along with that, the audience are required to wear the masks and follow a one-way system around the theatre. And they also encourage people to order the drinks that will be brought to their seats by ushers. Now, I was very excited when I got a personal invite to test whether this would work. Andrew Lloyd Webber brought in Beverly Knight to give an exclusive performance on Thursday. I was very excited to be invited down to London to be part of the audience. Here is how I got on. So tired. First time I've had to set my alarm in like four months. Got my mask and a little packed lunch because I'm going to London. There's so many people that I know are going. It's going to be weird because they're going to be sat metres away. <laughs> I won't be allowed to touch them or go near them. Here we go. This is the first time that I've been to a train station in a wolf. Months. First mistake of the day. Didn't realise you had to wear your face mask in the station as well as the entire journey. I don't mind wearing it. Like, obviously, like, it's protecting me as much as it's protecting anybody else. Uh, people have done full 10-hour shifts with these on. Credit to you, because it's not comfortable. Um, but I've got my branding, so... Yeah, in all seriousness, wear your mask. Yeah. How am I supposed to eat my packed lunch? So I'm on board. Um, so quiet. Normally, trains to London, I'd be stood in there by the toilet because I couldn't get a seat. Um, and now I've got pretty much a carriage to myself. So I'm back in Euston, London town. Um, so I'm going now to meet my pal Paul Vale, who is one of the critics from the stage. He is my plus one for the day. So we're here. There's the London Palladium. There's Beverly, and there's Paul Vale. <laughs> Are you excited, Mr. Vale? First drink in the West End. Cheers, Mr. Bell. So we're just in this queue. We've just given our information and now we're about to go in. It's all pretty straightforward and organized at the moment. Quite enjoying it. So that's a little camera monitor where they uh, checked our temperature. We must be fine because we've both got in. So we're here, we're in the London Palladium, um, right at the back, don't know why that is. <laughs> What's on the menu, Dolly? <laughs> <laughs> well, today we have rosé red and white wine, we have beer, we have soft drinks and spirits, gin in a tin, and we can do you some crisps. Nice. Thank you very much. What do you start to fill it? There are uh, the producers Brian and Jack from Take Two Theatricals. And over there we've got Eliza Jackson chatting to Ian Stryer from, well, aka Vermicelli. They're all here today. I'm so grateful uh, to you all for coming and being a sort of guinea pig like this, but um, 
the Palladium is meant to be full. It's a theatre that wants to love you, and uh, it, it's, it's sad. And I think this will amply prove why social distancing in theatre really doesn't work. It's a, it's a misery for the performers, I know, and thank you, Beverly, for being uh, so brave as to be miserable. <laughs> So Beverly Knight was incredible, sensational. She is uh, everything. Sang all the songs from her back catalogue. Well, not all of them, because she got so many. Um, and then a couple of songs from Memphis and Bodyguard. Um, and then obviously Memory from Cats. It was a brilliant evening and such a lovely afternoon getting to see loads of my old friends um, in such a weird environment. Um, yeah, it was an odd experience, I'm not going to lie, watching theatre with a mask on was difficult, it was hard to talk to people, engage with people, obviously you couldn't really speak to anybody you saw because you had to keep distance, um, but yeah, like I love theatre and yeah, 
What a day. I'm not gonna lie, my new jeans are chafing like a bitch. I'm vlogging, I'm vlogging. I'm vlogging, I'm vlogging. Don't vlog me, you're Don't. <laughs> yeah. There we go, back on the train after my day out in London. Now it remains to be seen whether this pilot performance will make any difference and whether this system can be adopted and rolled out across UK theatres. It's true to say that the Palladium is a huge theatre with Andrew Lloyd Webber's money behind it. But even the Palladium will struggle to become economically viable with only a 25% audience capacity. Elsewhere, the Regent's Park Open Air Theatre have announced a scaled back concert version of their smash show, Jesus Christ Superstar, which will be running for six weeks from the 14th of August, with nine performances a week. With the audience reduced from 1,250 to 390 people per performance, they have managed to sell out most of their performances already, with ticket prices ranging from 25 to 65 pounds. And this week, they announced their cast. The roles of Jesus, Judas and Mary will all be doubled up, meaning you will have two options of who you would like to see in these parts. Having personally seen Tyrone Hundley and Ricardo Alfonso, they are both incredible and I would really struggle to choose out of them. But with most people having already booked their tickets and the performance schedule not being announced yet, you won't find out until later who you will get to see. Which feels like quite a fun little lucky dip. Like I say, everybody in this cast has done it before and they are all incredible. And this is a brilliant production. Whether it will be compromised slightly because it's not the full production, it is a scaled back concert version which will last 90 minutes without an interval. And within that, you will not be getting Drew McConey's fantastic choreography. But this is a epic score written by Andrew Lloyd Webber with the lyrics by Tim Rice. And it's open air and it's live and it's theatre. And with no other theatres open, they don't really have much competition. So if you want to see some great live theatre this summer, this is your best bet. Now also this week it was announced by the producers of Dear Evan Hansen and The Book of Mormon that their shows won't be returning till next year. Unfortunately, they announced this without telling the cast or creatives. Now obviously this caused a lot of upset to the cast who had to find out by Twitter that their jobs won't be coming back until next year. It's surprising how this keeps happening and why producers aren't taking precautions to ensure that the cast and everybody involved are notified first before press releases are issued. And this is something that I discuss in my brand new series, Stagey Chat. Stagey Chat is a new series where I bring together three people from the industry to talk about things that are affecting the entire theatre community. And in this first episode, I chatted to Kira Brown, Paul Vale and Lucille Cliff. You can watch the entire video on my YouTube page. I loved Andrew Lloyd Webber's, Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber's speech at the beginning. I thought that was just yeah, so let's incredible. Talk about that. I don't really see him as a hero. He's made an awful lot of money through theatre. Is he a hero? I, I have a lot of respect for him, a huge amount of respect for what he's doing. And because if he wasn't doing it, nothing would be happening. I am really, really proud of this episode and hopefully I will be making more of them. Over in Sirencester, the incredible Barn Theatre have opened this week their Barn Fest, a series of socially distanced performances from their own courtyard. 
Starting off with Tweedy Clown, who sold out both of his first shows. There is lots coming up, including the touring production of A Midsummer Night's Dream and instructions for a teenage Armageddon that I saw earlier this year at the Old Red Lion. This is a fantastic one-woman show that blew me away. It's coming to Barnfest between the 10th and 15th of August, so if you get a chance, go and check it out. Also appearing in a brand new show called Funny Girls is Natasha Barnes and Vicky Stone, who will be appearing between the 5th and the 8th of August. But if you can't get out to Sirencester, then they will be bringing it to the New Normal Festival in Wandsworth on the 12th of August. Now, Ewan Lewis and Jamie Chapman Dixon at the Barn Theatre are doing an incredible job of programming new work as these changes in regulations are happening. And they also managed to secure a license to turn their theatre into a cinema, which should really, really help to keep this new company afloat during these difficult times. Now also this week, R&B artist Wiley made some anti-Semitic statements calling Jewish people cowards and snakes. This is disgusting behaviour and it should not be tolerated. I personally don't know who Wiley is. I've never heard his music. I have, however, reported all the tweets that I saw and I'm also using my platform to stand in solidarity with my Jewish friends to stamp out this type of behaviour and to make it clear that this is not acceptable. Wiley has been reportedly dropped from his record label and the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism have contacted the Cabinet Office to request that his MBE is revoked. Meanwhile, the police are investigating the case. A couple of new podcasts that I want to bring to your attention. So Adam Scott Pringle, with his dulcet Scottish tones, has brought out a new podcast called What's the Chat? What is the chat, Adam? Have a listen. And welcome to What's the Chat with me, Adam Scott Pringle. This is your new podcast for all things weird, wonderful and everything in between. From bizarre stories in the news you may have missed to finding out random silly facts. For example, the speed of a computer mouse is measured in Mickeys. Yep, I'm not making that up. Plus, I'll be looking at other things like what does M&M the chocolate actually stand for? Plus, I just found out who Gary Oldman's sister is. You won't want to miss it. Plus, I'll be having questions sent in for me to try and figure out in my own stupid way and popping in will be special guests including actors, comedians, musicians and I'll maybe even let my other half pop in to see what ghosts she has this week but it will all involve lots of banter, discussions and of course, chat. And another podcast featuring lots of stagey guests is called Don't Call Us. They now have seven episodes for you to listen to on their channel. This is the Don't Call Us podcast. Hello and welcome to the Don't Call Us podcast. The show celebrating the funniest, worst and most embarrassing stories from the audition room. I'm your host, Christopher Bartlett Walford, and together with a guest from the world of TV, film, theatre or comedy, each week we break down the funniest audition stories that you send in and celebrate the giggles and hilarious moments that happen when you least expect it at a casting. Maybe you went to a dance call, went for a really ambitious flip and ended up in A&E, or you've prepared completely the wrong material for the wrong show, or misjudged the tone of the humour in the room. We want to hear it! Having spent almost 15 years working as a performer and a casting director, I'll be sharing some of my tales with our guest, and having a giggle at ourselves at the same time, and not taking it too seriously. Whilst remembering, it's not the end of the world. And at least the panel remember you. <laughs> now, James Robert Moore and Kate Gollich have announced their production of Poster Boy, an adaptation of the brilliant book Out in the Army by my pal James Wharton. I saw an early workshop of this production and it is brilliant. It is being produced by Army in the Fringe as part of their virtual fringe. And free tickets for the performance on Monday the 17th of August are now available. 
with a cast that include the brilliant Debbie Shazen and Idris Kagbo. In some exciting news, Jamie Burkett announced that she is pregnant and I am delighted for her. And Stephanie Fearon has announced her pregnancy as well. They did say there was going to be a baby boom as a result of lockdown. And Jamie's little fella will, oh, I don't know if it is a boy, will be due later in the year. I'm so excited for her. Congratulations. In some brilliant news, 42nd Street is going to Paris. Directed by Stephen Meal with Cedric Neal playing Bert Barry. This is going to be a stunning production. I went over to Paris to see Funny Girl with Christina Bianco earlier in the year. And I will definitely try to visit this production later in the year. They are hopefully going to be performing between 21st of November to the 17th of January. And if you didn't catch it earlier in the week, I interviewed the brilliant John Barr all about his upcoming production of Godspell, which will be at the Hope Mill Theatre. If you want to know anything more about that, look at their website. But meanwhile, here's a little snippet of the interview with John Barr. Hello. So I said to Steve, and I said, look, a friend of mine's playing Pippi. I was very fortunate to be in the Lame Music Movie Convict 5. I know she awaits. I was 12 years old, I was in um, Oliver. Timbati! Is this theatrical enough? 43 years in show business this year. Wow. Slave to your craft. Absolutely. It's all I can do. <laughs> That's how dedicated I am, Phil. Oh, I know. Well, my mum my basically knew I had to go on a diet. <laughs> the only way the extras kept warm was by peeing on themselves. Oh. Because it was like a fossil routine. Everything yeah. was very precise and... Oh, what a circus. And he went, stop, stop. You kind of go, really? But I'm not that kind of actor. I'm, look at me holding a cigar now, look. Oh, what? <laughs> I don't think it ever leaves you, even though you get old and you maybe can't get that leg up. Johnny, when you go on, don't use a cigar. You look like Betty Davis. <laughs> <laughs> he is a legend and I loved chatting to him. You can watch the whole interview on my YouTube channel. On Friday, I watched the second in the series of Alice Fern's Intermissions. Oh my God, it's brilliant. She is in... I, she makes me, she makes me sick. Not only is Alice Fern one of the best vocalists we have in this country, as well as being a damn fine actress, anybody who saw her as Alphaba will testify how brilliant she is. Not only that, she is now a brilliant TV host and presenter. This is a brand new enterprise set up by her with director Kirk Jameson, who have both put a lot of time and work into this show. And it shows. It is so well produced. Coming live from her own back garden <laughs> with multi-camera setup, stream completely live with your chance to interact and engage by sending in your pictures and tweets they have nick barstow the incredible musical director live on the piano and each week she has a couple of fantastic guests this week they have the brilliant emma lindars joe trucani and sam tutty and yeah, stunning and at only nine pounds, it is a brilliant value and definitely the best online content you will find at the moment. Apart from this blog, obviously. Although, honestly, Alice, if you're ever going to take intermissions on tour around the country, come to Cumbria. I would love to have you in my back garden. Seriously, come, please. in absolute awe of Alice and her team. Honestly, congratulations to the entire team. Here is a little snippet from the show. I said you'd be hearing more of her, and I don't lie. This is Emma Lindars.
heading over to the green room because, of course, we've got a couple be. of people in there. And the rest in you. To this our Sam Tutti and our Joe Tassini over there. This will be nice. the first time in a while. We can build a beautiful city. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. We can build a beautiful city. Not a city of angels. We can build a city of men. And that, if you didn't recognize it, was Sam singing Beautiful City from Godspell. And he will be taking part in the Godspell online concert at the Hope Mill Theatre as well. Congratulations to the entire team of intermissions. Now, Kirk Jameson and Nick Barstow will be teaming up again for a musical review of Work of Hand and Ebb, running at Barnfest from the 24th of August to the 5th of September. So there's another reason to visit the barn fest. So on Sunday evening, it was the return of a mad drag night. The jewel in the crown of Mad Trust's collection of charity events. So this year, Mad Trust have organised a special COVID-19 emergency relief fund, which all the donations raised from this evening will go towards. If you haven't been to a Mad Drag Night, this would have been the sixth one, having started in 2015 at the Hippodrome Casino. Put together by David O'Reilly, Sean Parkers and David McMillan, it is honestly a sensational night out. These guys put on a show to end all shows, full of incredible routines. They don't make them beats like they used to, they don't make them beats. Hey! They don't make them beats like they used to, they don't make them beats. Hey! They don't get their life like they used to, they don't get their life. Hey! They don't take the night like they used to, they don't take the night like they used to. They don't snap that snap like they used to, they don't snap that snap. Hey! They don't click click clack like they used to, they don't click click clack. Hey! They don't push that back like they used to, they don't push that back. Hey! They don't bump that track like they used to, they don't bump that track. The night dies, till the night dies, lit. We gon' pose for that spotlight. We gon' dance till the night dies. They don't make them beats like they used to. They don't make them beats. They don't make them beats like they used to. They don't make them beats. They don't get their life like they used to. They don't get their life. They don't take the night like they used to. They don't take the night like they used to. Who told you, child? They don't make them beats like they used to, girl. <laughs> It honestly is a testament to everybody that takes part each year, how much these shows have continued to grow. And they really do showcase the best of the talent across the West End. So this year's theme was Corona She Better Don't. And although I was hoping for a brand new collection of routines, what they served us was a collection of videos from previous years, mostly from last year's event, which they obviously filmed in high definition. Which, don't get me wrong, I was loving it. I actually missed out last year because I was up in Edinburgh. So for me, I was loving the chance to revisit those performances from last year that I didn't get to see. And although the Queens did come together for a brilliant finale, I was a little disappointed that there wasn't a few more original performances put together especially for this year. I mean, it's not like the girls are busy. <laughs> All jokes aside, it was a true testament to five incredible years of incredible performances. And I am sure that these guys will come back bigger and even better next year. And I am here for it. And if nothing else, at least with a virtual performance, Mad Trust didn't waste all the money on the free bar at the after party. <laughs> what? Just saying. Anyway, if one cabaret show full of drag queens wasn't enough for your Sunday evening, Jed Berry came along with the angels from Kinky Boots around the world for their incredible show, Raise You Up. I mean, I don't know how he does that. He should be busy learning his lines for Fanny and Stella. 
Great work by Jed and everybody involved. And such a great cause. Anyway, so that's enough for this week. I hope I haven't bored you too much. I hope you found something that you enjoyed out of all of that. Please do let me know what you think. Like and subscribe if you don't mind. Just make me feel better. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, this is Stephen Schwartz, and I'm delighted to announce that the 50th anniversary celebration of Godspell, produced by Gingerquith Media and the Hope Mill Theatre, is now on sale. This concert is in support of great causes, including Acting for Others and the National AIDS Foundation. Please join me in an absolutely spectacular cast, because even in these challenging times, we can build a beautiful city. Of angels, but we can build a city of love.